Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be reviewing Prism Shandy by Lauren Stone. Where do I even begin with this bizarre, weird, classical book? I don't even, I wouldn't even term it as a classical book just because of its, of it being so ahead of its time. This uh, crazy uh, volume of books appeared at the initially in 1759 and then it ended in nine, sorry, 1767 so um, it was quite a long uh, process of writing um, to his audience and readers at the time um, and it actually was received very well despite its very postmodern quality. It's definitely so different to what I would usually read. It follows a the narrator Tristram Shandy who is very I guess it's a debate whether Tristram Shandy is also Lauren Stern because this is very uh, metafictional um, Lauren Stern definitely inserts so much of his own personality into it and yeah it, it follows also different male characters the reason why I have such a love-hate relationship with this is because the way it's written is so anti-novel. Um, at the time it would have been considered anti-romance because novels weren't really termed as novels back then. But yeah, it, it doesn't follow a plot, sh any structure. It's just literally, because um, the full title of it is actually The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy, Gentlemen. So it definitely mocks the books at the time which were very adventurous so for example I guess the book that comes into mind is um, The Adventures of Robinson Crusoe so this is literally the opposite it's the opinions of a man which are so mundane they're not even interesting opinions they're very very strange for example he, con like he continuously talks about his hobby horse I had to google what a hobby horse was just because it's not a term I'm familiar with and it's just a fake toy, fake toy horse and he talks about it on and on and on and he talks about things like tying knots there's literally pages and pages full of just him describing his large nose yeah I guess that's the best way to put what put the contents into words <laughs> it's just basically nonsense uh, nonsense babbling <laughs> but I guess where my love for it ties in is the aspect of it being so meta to the point that you're really conscious of yourself as a reader so it really makes you reflect on how you read and what you take from reading because often when you're reading conventional novels that actually have a plot and a story you sometimes forget that you're reading an author's work you forget about the author and you kind of have this suspension of disbelief because you're so invested in the story with this book you don't have that you know constantly that you're reading a physical copy of a book you're reading Lawrence Stern's words which just make you want to tear your hair out it's so frustrating and to be honest I don't even know how I got through it um, I had the help of um, an audiobook but at times I did read the pages as well because it is a w if there's one book to avoid um, using an audiobook for it's this one just because the pages are very let me just give you an example they're very visual so you have like lots of blank bits you also have completely blank pages which bear with me I will find <laughs> you also have things like this which is a reflection of Lauren Stern or you could say Tristan Shandy at this point I don't even I don't even know but it's a reflection of how his 
previous chapters and volumes went. So I guess this straight line over here is actually how he wanted it to go, but these are like diversions and interruptions that he had throughout writing, um, and that is why it has that kind of pattern. And I found that quite interesting, that kind of self-reflection in writing. This is another example of kind of like the visual experience that you get from this book. So you have this whole marble effect on this page and it kind of just represents like the sensory experience. That's what I got from it. The sensory experience you have with reading. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, to be honest, I'm not sure I got that much sensory experience from this just because I was so distracted by the constant repetition and boredom that I got from this. Um, however, I say that, I do think it's an important book to read um, because it really helps you understand books in general. I, I, I don't know how to, how else to put it really. So yeah, this is the blank page that you get after a chapter and then you go on to uh, another chapter. And the function of this blank chapter, or, or page, um, is to make you as a reader maybe add your own notes in, that's what it was I think initially designed for, or just to kind of mentally reflect and think about what the hell you just read. Um, so it's kind of again like a pause that Stern is encouraging you to do. Um, and that's another aspect that I thought was quite interesting, so if you want to analyse this book the, the most kind of obvious um, analysis of this would be that it follows a true pattern of life, you know, because in reality life is not planned and plotted like a book is. It has constant interruptions and people, you know, distract you and you divert onto different things. And I guess this book follows that likeness very much because, you know, Tristram Shandy doesn't always end up saying what he wants to say and what he plans to write because there's characters that get in the way and I guess it's a, 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 a pattern of life in that sense. And the language reflects that notion of it being a true pattern of life because instead of it being this kind of artificially designed um, language system that you usually get in books, it's very free-flowing and it just goes its own way. Um, it's very bizarre some of the things that he says. Another thing about this that's worth to think about is the construction of time in this book. So instead of it being a uh, time govern being governed uh, by like days and weeks and months as it usually is in books. In this book, time is governed by the succession of ideas, and I think that's also very like true to life. Um, obviously, we have days and we have months and whatnot, but we definitely pass time with thoughts and you know we're always thinking even subconsciously so I think that is really interesting the way that Stern uh, kind of manipulates that and and constructs time in that way so yes this book is all about encouraging the reader to be actively involved um, it challenges the idea of words and language like how much do we really need to communicate with words you know we can communicate visually with um, these strangely laid out pages and we can experience stories differently through different types of narrative structure and narrative voice. He really invites you to um, go back and understand certain passages like for example the chapters that have lots of asterisks in it. Those are used to kind of leave out certain words for you to work it out what it means and that's another way that he's encouraging you to be an active reader. So overall, I think this book is really important to read just to kind of get an experience of a different type of genre and a completely different type of novel um, in general. Um, and 
also, it's it's one of those ones that I think a lot of people have mixed opinions on, which I find interesting in books. So there's some people that will absolutely love this just because of how bizarre and strange it is. Um, will love the humour of it. Will find it hilarious. Um, and there's other book. Uh, there's other readers that will just think that it's really bo boring, which. I thought a little bit it was, <laughs> but I still appreciate it as a book, um, and I'm glad that I read it. So yes, it has multiple interpretations and multiple readerships, and that is what is so great about this. So um, I do recommend this um, overall. I don't think I would read it again, just I think once was enough, to be honest. Um, also, another thing that you should think about if you do want to read this is please get an edition with footnotes because my edition didn't come with footnotes and I struggled a lot. There is a lot of intertextuality in this and a lot of references that we as modern readers will just not get. So um, yes, that is definitely something to think about. Um, thank you so much if you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching um, and I will see you next time with another review.